Hey everybody, Pastor Steven Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. I'm here with Anselm here, who is from Germany. And we're talking today about the spiritual condition of Germany. Uh, what do you want to start out talking about? So, I mean, Germany is um, a former Christian nation. And mm -hmm. I say former because nowadays you have uh, a lot of Catholics and Protestants, but if you ask them what they believe, they don't believe anything. Mm -hmm. Most of them are atheists. So Germany is, uh, is an atheist country, I would say. So, so even though they're actually technically members of the Roman Catholic Church on paper, yeah. or the evangelical church on paper, they're not actually in their personal lives devout. And if you actually ask them if they believe in God, mm -hmm. they don't even really believe that God necessarily even exists or, yeah. or that Jesus Christ is even really the Son of God. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people would say, yeah, there is a God, but they don't really believe in Jesus. No. Just kind of like a higher power, a supreme yeah. being or yeah. something. Yeah, so I remember when I was in Germany, I was young. I was like 18 years old. So I actually spent like a week going to German mm -hmm. high schools. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of went to high school as a student just to get the experience. So I went to three different schools. I got to try like the Hauptschule, Realschule, and Gymnasium, <laughs> all, all three different kinds. And, you know, I went to some religion classes mm -hmm. because the students take religion classes yep. in school. And the religion class was basically they handed out a piece of paper and it had like Matthew, Mark and Luke. And it was the same episode in all three of those Gospels. And it was just trying to find like contradictions and pick it apart. It was almost just trying to show you why you should not believe the Bible wow. or like trying to find problems in the Bible. And it was just stupid because obviously Matthew, Mark, and Luke are giving three different perspectives. So they're telling yep. the story in their own way, but there's no contradiction. They're just exactly. giving different perspectives, different angles. You know, the so-called contradictions are easily explained. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm like, that's a religion class mm -hmm. was just to, to basically destroy people's faith in the Bible by telling, oh, look at these contradictions and, and making a big deal out of nothing. Exactly. Yeah. Did you take the religion classes? Yeah, definitely. I had a religion classes and, um, you know, some teachers were like nice people. They, they weren't, uh, they weren't atheists. Mm -hmm. um, but others like one pastor, he was, a, he was an unbeliever for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, but he's a pastor. Um, yeah, but he's a pastor. And yeah. he's not even claiming to be a believer, basically. He's kind of admitting that he doesn't believe in it. Well, that's kind of what I figured. Yeah. I mean, that's how it struck you as a student. Yeah, right. He <laughs> came off that way. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, religion classes in Germany are completely useless. It's, uh -huh. it's mostly just ethics, like morality, and mm. you learn about different religions. But then you don't learn much about the Bible. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so in Germany, there are some good churches. There, mm -hmm. there are, uh, you know, some good Baptist missionaries that are there, and and yep. and local pastors. But it's just Germany is such a huge country. Germany's big, mm -hmm. and it has what about like eighty five million people or something like that, that roughly. Sense. And so, you know, there are very few churches with respect to how big of a country it is. So sometimes you would have to drive like for hours to get to a decent church, am I right? Yeah, man, you could l drive like six hours, seven hours. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> no, I know, it's, it's sad. <laughs> no, I've been there and, and, and tried to find a church to go to on Sunday, yep. and it's pretty hard sometimes to find anything close. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I strongly believe that in Germany there are 7,000 that have a bow the knee to bail. Yeah. And there, there's always that righteous remnant. Mm -hmm. But in general, it's a pretty godless country. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that it's very receptive as far as the young people are concerned. The young people, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and really only the young people. Because exactly. when you try to talk to people that are like middle-aged mm -hmm. or older, they're not very receptive, are they? Yeah, and, and a fun um, experience I always like to tell is I went mm -hmm. sewing door-to-door -door in in my hometown in Eastern Germany, it's right at the border to Poland, mm -hmm. w which was uh, the German Democratic Republic, so socialism, communism. And um, I, I talked to this older lady and she said, no, I'm not interested. I'm a citizen of the GDR. So older people still have this mindset 
they were still a citizen of the GDR. They are still in communism, still in socialism. So in East and, Germany, yeah. like that's like their religion. Like I mean, f- for like... some older people, yeah, <laughs> probably. That's crazy! So wow. They because... really got um, you know brainwashed into atheism by communism. Because the DDR pushed atheism. Yeah, I mean, uh, you can read a lot about um, pastors, um, you know. Being persecuted or... Like, persecuted maybe, or not being able to say what they want. You know. They didn't have the freedom. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and speaking of having freedom to, to say what you want, Germany does not have freedom of speech mm-hmm. when it comes to preaching the Word of God. Because you preached, it a, you preached a sermon exactly where you were preaching what the Bible said, and basically the police came and raided your house, yep. they, they took all your electronics... They started questioning everyone you knew, and they seemed like they were going to arrest you, mm-hmm. you know, and you just, you ended up leaving, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, in America, you would have been, you can preach whatever you want because there's no consequence as far as, like, you don't have to fear going to prison because you preach the Bible. Mm-hmm. So we're really thankful for that in America. Amen. I mean, it's a big difference between Germany and, uh, and the U.S., because, I mean, in theory, we have uh, freedom of speech in our constitution in Germany, mm-hmm. but they don't really stick to that. I mean, yeah. whatever the government agenda is, you know, they will limit it, definitely. And it's probably going <laughs> to get that way here eventually. Yeah. So you've been soul winning here in America now mm-hmm. for the last several weeks. Yeah. So how would you compare soul winning in Germany to soul winning here? It's completely different in the sense that uh, um, older people in, in the U.S. are also listening to the gospel and getting saved, you know. Mm. I, I can't remember, well, actually, I can't remember when was the last time I got um, an older person saved in Germany. But, but it's it was, a lot it was more like rare. Two years ago, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you've gotten, a, a, you've gotten a, a bunch of younger people saved. Yes. Right? Like, like, you guys get a few people saved a month or something as far as your soul winning group over in Germany? Definitely, yeah. So, uh, this weekend... Um, we had like a smaller soul winning marathon in uh, southern Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was uh, three people, and they got at least you know one saved. So, so three three people went out soul winning in Germany on a yeah. day, and they had a salvation. Yes, and and your group in general, it seems like, would get a few people saved a month on average. Several people saved. Yeah, uh, I think in the first three months of 2022, you had like 14. Salvations or something. Yeah, like but this that. is just um, from our um, events. Yeah, but I don't know how many everybody got saved in their own in their own like daily lives yeah, of, of exactly, soul winning yeah. and so forth. Yeah, so it's probably more. Yeah, so you don't really know how much they did in their personal lives, but mm. through your organized soul winning events and stuff over the course of like three months, you guys had like a total of fourteen salvations. But those were pretty much all young people. Yeah. But, I mean, that's great. You know, th- that means that there's a new generation coming mm-hmm. up that is at least open. Yeah, and that's really the only hope for Germany. There mm-hmm. is. I mean, young people need to get saved. They need to learn the Bible. And uh, they are actually receptive in Germany. Mm-hmm. Because I, I think they they see how wicked the society is becoming, how weird every, everything is. Mm-hmm. So, um, so the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Yeah. You know, it'd yeah. be great if... if, if all of these young people, if every last one of them mm. would get a presentation of the gospel. Amen. Because a bunch of them would get saved. Yeah. And then, and then you know, you could really see some actual good churches established. Yep. You know, I don't think you're going to turn around the nation of Germany morally at this mm. point or spiritually. But, man, wouldn't it be great to just see a bunch of just red hot soul winning churches established uh, if we could just get a bunch of people saved, Amen. and and the, the 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 mission field is there, the people are receptive at that young age. We just need to go talk to them. We just need to do the soul winning. Am I right? Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and and you know, speaking of kind of just the ungodliness of Germany, I, I, I've told this story once or twice, but like this just kind of blew my mind. We were driving down the road on a Sunday, and so they were kind of talking about religious type stuff mm-hmm. on the radio because it was a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And I kid you not, they're talking about kind of some of the differences between Islam and Christianity. Mm. This was like their little religious talk or whatever. So this was in 2000... I want to say 2016, maybe? Because this is is when I got... It was whenever I got uh, kicked out of Botswana. Whenever I got arrested and Mm. deported from Botswana. 
I ended up flying from Botswana to Germany. Yeah. And I just kind of hung out in Germany because mm. I had a return flight from Germany to the U.S. So I ended up just hanging out for like a week in Germany mm. and spending time with my wife's relatives. Yeah. And I was able to witness to some of them and so forth. But while I was there, so yeah, it must have been 2016, I think. Mm. We're listening to the radio and I kid you not, they're saying like, one of the differences with Christianity and Islam is that in Islam, you pretty much wait until you're married to have mm. sex. Whereas, you know, we as Christians, this, this lady is saying, we as Christians, you know, we'll basically sleep with people before we're married and maybe live together for a while and make sure that this is really who we want to be married to. And she's literally saying, like, <laughs> this is what we do in Christianity, you know, whereas the Muslims, they would basically wait until they're married to do that. Wow. I mean, I was just kind of blown away by that. I mean, I've never heard that. <laughs> but I mean, that's that was crazy. so blasphemous, yeah, it's, you know, it's to different. sit there and say, oh, yeah, that's that's what, you know, the Christian way is. It's unbelievable. Uh, what? <laughs> well, I'm glad you haven't heard that. But that's yeah. that's what I heard when I was there. And it probably doesn't really shock you that much, though, because that evangelical church over there is super yeah, liberal. I mean, forget it. Yeah. Anything goes. Am I right? <laughs> Definitely. I mean. Yeah. And I know that there's a mentality over there that basically doesn't really think that fornication's that bad mm. or that I mean is society really pushing young people to stay pure until they're married nope. or not at all. You know, preaching that to them at all? No. So that I guess that's where this radio broadcast came yeah, in. Then. Yeah. yeah. So I mean as far as just morally, uh it's it, it's there's definitely a lot of ungodliness in the culture. Um it seems like there's a lot more nudity there than there is here, like as far as just public nudity. Yeah, I mean, we have these, uh, you heard of FKK beaches, like, which means like basically nude beaches. Right? Mm. So, I'm sure they have that here too, but it's, yeah. it's, it might be a little more widespread over there. But I remember like just driving down the road in Germany mm. and there was just like a, a median. There were a bunch of lanes going this way, a bunch of lanes going this way. It was like a median in the middle with grass. Mm -hmm. And this was maybe near like, it was some major city. I don't remember if it was Munich or Frankfurt or whatever. Mm -hmm. That there was just a dude just stark naked, like exercising or doing yoga or something. What? And I told my wife that and she said, oh yeah, there's these people will do that. And it's like a game or something where they'll, they'll do that for 20 minutes or something. And then they'll kind of get out of there before the cops show up or whatever. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> But 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 not only that, it seemed like when you go to the grocery store, uh, the magazine covers had yeah. like just full on nudity on yeah. the front. Whereas yeah. here, you wouldn't see that here. Like yeah. you'd see maybe like a bikini babe mm -hmm. or something. But you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it'll yeah. just be like yeah. full on. So they're true. Yeah. they're a little bit looser on their morality than the U.S. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? To in put general? it that way, is Let that it putting it mildly? <laughs> That's very mild, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, there's there's just a, there's just a lot more, just you know, fornication, adultery. There's a lot of drunkenness. Mm. I mean, if people aren't serious about the things of God, even if they're a member of the Catholic Church or the Evangelical Church, yeah. they usually don't necessarily even believe in it. So because uh, a lot of people just get born into the church, yeah, because their parents are um, registered with the church, mm -hmm. and when you you are born, you basically automatically a member of the church. So and when you get a job, you yeah. tell them what church you're a part of. Right on your job application, yeah. and and they actually deduct your tithing and send it straight to the church for you. Am I right? Exactly. We have we have church tax. Yeah, it's it's yeah. not it's not ten percent. It's only like a few percent, mm. I think, but. I've talked to people over there that said that, you know, you could get a little bit of discrimination or persecution if you're, say, a Baptist or something, mm. because they look at that and just think, oh, this is some cult or something. Because my wife said that over there, if you're not Catholic or Lutheran, you're in a cult in a lot of people's mind. That's how a lot of people think of it. Yeah, yeah. So that basically, you know, having a job application that says you're Catholic or Lutheran that kind of checks a box like okay this guy's normal this guy's <laughs> this guy's one of us or whatever whereas if it's like baptist what's that you know yeah yeah definitely have you thought about that a little bit or 
Yeah, I mean, m most people um, in Germany consider the, these free churches, how we call mm -hmm. them, because they are not um, not an organization like the Evangelical Catholic Church who can uh, deduct this church tax. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think of these free churches as, you know, um, yeah, basically as cults. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, um, well, they are so conservative and... I mean, most of them aren't really that conservative. Yeah, though, but, but relatively, relatively yeah. super fundamental or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> so what, which one, uh, w which of these churches did you start out in though, at birth? Were you registered in one? Mm, yeah. Um, I started out with the evangelical church. Mm -hmm. The Lutheran. Yeah, which is basically Lutheran, but yeah. they, I mean, they got away from a lot of Luther's doctrines. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the Luther, just like the Lutherans here, don't yeah. really believe anything that Luther believed. Yeah, yeah. Especially not the uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so you basically, uh, did you get baptized as a baby? No, uh, because my parents actually wanted me to decide you know, what I believe. You know, but they were right. Lutheran? Well, my father was um, Catholic on paper. My mother mm -hmm. was Protestant. Okay. So I grew up in the Protestant church. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I did the confirmation in the Protestant church, mm -hmm. which is like, yeah, similar to what they do in the Catholic church, where they teach you what the church believes. And um, then I got baptized as maybe like a... 13 year old or so. They just sprinkled you when you were 13? Yeah, just sprinkling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then so, <laughs> later when you got saved, uh -huh. did you unregister or what? Uh, or are yeah. you still a member? I'm, I'm not a member, no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually unregistered. And, you know, what's so funny? I, I went to the, um, what's it called? <coughs> like, um, the. Um, mm, some kind mm. of a, is it some department of, or government office or something where you yeah, register? Yeah, like off the city. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they had a special department which said Kirchenaustritte, which means like um, people who exit the church. <laughs> 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 I'm not kidding. They had this a sign like, it's like the, exits. the Department of Apostasy. <laughs> <laughs> Apostasy it Division of City Hall. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Because they are constantly losing members. Oh, are you forsaking the church? This is where you get in line yeah, right here. Yeah, And you line up with everybody. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so there were a bunch of people that were forsaking. Uh, uh, so I think I had to pay like 20 euros to get off. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you have to, have to pay well, them. Well, we're going to institute that at Faithful Word. You got, it, it costs you 100 bucks to, to, to quit the church. Yeah. Uh, inflation, you know. So I got out of it. I didn't have to pay taxes later on mm -hmm. when I got a job. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, when I got saved, I <coughs> obviously I didn't realize um, <coughs> realize all the bad stuff they are teaching. Right, it's, it's, it's the process. Well, you just gotten saved, yeah. so you didn't know all the doctrine yet. You're just kind of learning. Mm -hmm. And also, I already listened to a lot of your preaching, so it mm -hmm. was, you know. Obviously, getting saved is not a process, but it wasn't like just one event. It, you know. Yeah, getting saved is in an instant, but learning is a process yeah. and, and figuring out all these things and yeah. growing and yeah, for sure. So, so I wasn't really sure like exactly when I got saved, and um, uh, so I, I th thought for a long time that, that I got saved in this Protestant church mm -hmm. until I realized what. Well, the like you thought you might have saved. already been saved earlier. Ex exactly. Then, yeah. then you realize, yeah, I probably wasn't saved back then because I didn't really understand things. And yeah. So, so, so then later. I thought about like when did I really believe in like uh, faith alone and once yeah. I was always saved. Obviously, that wasn't when I went to the Protestant church. Right. It was uh, through your preaching, by the way, to heaven and so. You got that later, yeah. So not only are most people in Germany not saved, mm -hmm. although the young people are receptive, but also it's kind of difficult to live in Germany mm -hmm. as a, a born again Christian. <clears throat> yep. Right? Because like some of the some of the obstacles that you could face are like, first of all, you know, homeschooling is illegal. It is, yeah. And so if you wanted to homeschool your children, that's gonna be uh, you know, pretty much impossible. No. I know some people get around it by like some of these Baptist churches form like a Christian school, mm. but it's it, they're kind of virtually just homeschooling, mm. but they 
they kind of get around it that way. But it's it, but they enforce that. I mean, they've arrested people. And, yep. You know, the, the police will take their kids to school and stuff. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, that's an issue. Also, just speaking out about some of the things that the Bible says. Mm-hmm. Like, if you, if you spoke out about what the Bible says about the homos, for example, mm-hmm. you know, you could get... Um, up to five years in prison. Up to five years in prison. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's... crazy. So, you know, it makes it a little bit difficult to, uh, you know, preach the word of God loudly yeah. or to raise your children and things like that. But on the positive side, you can go soul winning there with no issue, right? Like, did you did you really have any issues with soul winning? No, absolutely not. I mean, soul winning yeah. is completely, completely legal. You can mm-hmm. do that all the time. Um, obviously, yeah, like I said, it's not very receptive. But you just have to stay with it, and eventually yeah. you will get somebody saved. You know? Amen. So, I mean, you know, Christians can still live for God in Germany and, and yeah. do a great work for God over yes. there. Yeah. You know, there are obviously some obstacles, especially if you wanted to be a pastor or preaching mm. over there. But in general, Christians can function and win souls and, yeah. and do what they need to do. So anything else you want to say in closing about the spiritual condition of Germany? So what's really interesting about Germany is that um, <clears throat> in Germany were a lot of Baptists during mm. the Reformation era, a lot of Anabaptists. But so, so Germany really was um, uh, in a much better spiritual condition. In the past. In the past. Mm. But Baptists fled Germany. A lot of Baptists went to the U.S. eventually. Um, so they really left... Uh, Germany, like with the spiritual vacuum, mm. there wasn't really much there. Right. <laughs> so that's like the biggest problem I see historically. Um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, <sighs> but you can't really blame him for getting out of there, can you, Anzo? <laughs> <laughs> Since you did the same thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Which you know, I th- I think you did the right thing because yeah. you know there was so much heat mm-hmm. coming down on you, and the Bible says if, if they persecute you in this city, flee into another. Yep. Yeah, I mean. But thankfully, there's still a righteous remnant over there that's doing the soul winning. Exactly. I'm not 100% sure whether I'm allowed to enter the country of Germany because I know I'm banned from the Netherlands Mm -hmm. and I was banned from the entire Schengen area of of mainland Europe. But I think that that ban of the entire Europe might have expired. I know I can never go to the Netherlands again, Mm -hmm. but I, I have to go to Germany to check. Because I'm not sure if I'm going to be allowed or not. Because I would love to go there and do soul winning. Amen. But even if I can't personally go there, I know lots of other people can go there. And there's already boots on the ground of, of soul winners there. So, I mean, hopefully in our lifetime, we can see a lot of people saved in Germany through soul winning. And also just through the internet. Hopefully if we can just put out a lot of preaching and, and um, you know, Bible-based videos in mm-hmm. the German language... Hopefully, we can kind of, you know, kindle some spiritual fires over there. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Amen. Thank you.